okay students good evening so uh, anyway this is just an introduction to what we did yesterday uh, i think most of you all were present when we spoke about liquefaction of gases yesterday today we just spoke about the graph okay this is the graph i told in the class so uh, well uh, i hope you remember what andrews experiment is all about this is all about the andrews experiment okay so what we were talking about is we were basically talking about real gases okay so you know how they are present right real gases when you have it in a particular mixture real gases obviously gases the molecular intermolecular attractive force is very very weak so they all you know move around everywhere but now here what are we trying to do we are trying to liquefy a gas now liquefaction basically means you are actually converting the state so gas you are trying to convert it back to a liquid and i hope you all remember this right uh, if you do recall in grade 10 you have also learnt about fractional distillation of air and all that so the first step what they would do is they would liquefy air right they would bring down the pressure and uh, sorry bring down the temperature and increase the pressure to make it a liquid liquid and then they would do the different uh, boiling points and all that if you do recall okay so similarly here also they are basically talking about real gases according to them they said that ideal gas cannot be liquefied because they say that there is no force of attraction do you remember the kinetic theory of gases that in the, in the kinetic theory of gases i think that the fourth law basically the fourth postulate says that there should be no intermolecular force of attraction between each molecule there should no there, there should be no force of attraction nor should there be any repulsion so well here we are talking about a real gas example we are taking is carbon dioxide okay so the experiment the name of the experiment is andrews experiment and here we are basically what we doing is we are actually increasing the pressure so pressure increases what will happen all these molecules will come closer to one another and they would actually have a lot they would immediately form bonds but when you're talking about temperature they would basically uh they would less or decrease the temperature so when you decrease the temperature they would have no kinetic energy to move around and they would stop they would actually form immediately form bonds with one another and then the volume would be i mean you can get the liquid so that is all we were talking about here that's all so now this graph was introduced today in the class i had explained it to them so basically we are actually uh, here this is a relation between pressure and volume so this is about uh, the isotherm so this is a andrews isotherm which means at constant temperature they would do this they would perform this experiment so they found at different temperatures so let's say 50 degrees 31 30.9 and 21 and all that but anyway what you have to remember is from gas state it is getting converted to a liquid so that is what is happening at 50 you can realize that even in increasing this much uh, i mean in decreasing this much pressure nothing is going to happen and it's not getting converted to a liquid as it enters this particular graph you can realize that when it touches here that is a point where a gas gets converted to a liquid so that is what we are talking about here that's all okay so this point is a point wherein the gas is actually becoming a liquid okay and that point is actually called as a critical point i had already mentioned this previously yesterday it's called as a critical point and the pressure corresponding to the point obviously see this is the this will be the pressure one second yeah this is the pressure this is going to be called as a critical pressure and this particular volume will be called as a critical volume and the experiment this experiment is performed at 30.98 and therefore the critical temperature is 30.98 that's all with liquefaction of gases and today we also spoke about um one second yeah we had also spoken uh, in the class about correction factors that is what i would like to talk to you all today about the different correction factors on uh, the pv is equal to nrt yeah so this is the one i had just told you all that it the derivation is not required for this i hope it's clear now okay <laughs> yeah um so anyway basically if you all do recall your what is the ideal gas equation you all know that it is nothing but pv is equal to nrt where p stands for pressure v for volume n for number of moles r for the gas constant which is 8.314 joule per kelvin mole right and 
T is your temperature. Now, here what we're going to do is this is this was the law given, and then they said that this is only applicable for ideal gases, right? Because in real gases, what did they say? In they said in real gases, there are a lot of attractive forces between the molecule as well as repulsive forces. So to account for those things, we have some correction factors. And this is the correction, final correction factors, which have been added to your equation. And then you would obtain your new real gas equation. Okay. So, is it, I hope it's clear so far. So, anyway, uh, here we are basically, this was given by a scientist, Mr. Van der Waal. If you do remember, this is the same scientist who started with the Van der Waals force of attraction and uh, the Van der Waals radii and all that, the same scientist. Okay, so what he did was, he said that instead of P, we should also account for some correction term, which is A n square divided by V square. So to this P, you have to add this A n square by V square, where I'll explain A and B a little later, okay? So just remember this, N obviously you all know it is the same N, which is nothing but number of moles. V stands for volume, okay? So he said, instead of pressure, we are accounting for P plus A n square divided by V square. Okay, just substituting the value for P. You have to add these two values. And similarly for volume, instead of volume what we have, we are just going to subtract N B from it. Okay, B also I would explain to you in just two minutes. N obviously stands for number of moles. I hope it's clear now. Obviously your RH side still remains the same which is N R T. Got it? So PB is equal to NRT where P it is P plus AN square by V square. V for V it is nothing but V minus NB is equal to NRT. Okay? So now let me talk to you about A and B. A and B are nothing but they are factors which is accounting for your attractive as well as repulsive forces. Okay? That's all. So A and B basically stands for if let's say you're talking about oxygen atom and helium okay you're comparing these two so let's say an oxygen atom let's say this is one particular atom of oxygen this is another atom they would definitely have a stronger force of interaction between a helium and another helium right here there is actually none so this kind of difference is accounted for here that is why we have two terms a is for pressure and b is for volume so that's all with it and this is also called as a van der waals equation uh, for n number of moles for real gas that you have to remember that this is also called as a correction term that's all nothing else i hope it's clear i'm sorry if it's a longer video and my phone is um, <laughs> it's actually broken so i hope it's clear anyway thank you